One thing I've learned being in the game dev space for the last four months is that it is imperative that you build, deploy, and test your games as quickly as possible. You want to do this for two reasons. One, quick feedback from friends, clients, or fans. And two, smaller code changes are much, much simpler to manage, which means just spending lesser time testing, worrying about edge cases, and of course, working overtime. Today, I'm going to teach you how to quickly get started with CI CD for your Unity project so you can build your games in the cloud and distribute them to your friends immediately. I have not covered running tests here, but the process is mostly the same. Let's get started. So here I am in my GitHub, and if you head over to slash new, I'm in my create a new repository page. So here I'm going to create a new repository. I'm going to name this Unity CI CD hyphen YouTube. And just a very simple description CI CD for my Unity project. I'm gonna leave this as a public repository and I'm gonna hit create repository. Now, before I commit my project, I want a simple git ignore for Unity. So I'm gonna head over to gitignore.io and here I'm gonna search for Unity and I'm gonna copy this all the way and I'm going to head over into my project through my terminal. So if you see here, this is my Unity project. I'm going to create a git ignore. The way you do that is by using the command called touch. If you're using commander or any Unix shell, I'm going to open this in my favorite editor, which is Visual Studio Code. And within my git ignore, I'm going to paste the git ignore that I just received. Save this and we're good to go. Right, so back in my terminal, you can see here, I'm in my Unity project. I'm going to initialize git repository. So I'm going to do git init. And if I do a git status, you can see here that my git ignore works as intended, so it doesn't commit everything. I'm going to add the entire project. I'm going to commit these changes and say first commit. And before I can push, I have to add this remote origin, which I do here. And then I do git push. I can push this to master. And you can see here that I have all my changes here on my repository. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually create a folder called GitHub with a dot so that it indicates that it's a hidden file. And I navigate into GitHub and I create another folder called workflows, right? And I navigate into workflows and here is where I create two YML files that describes my GitHub actions that I can use that sort of automates my entire build pipeline. So the first step of this process is actually activation. As we can see here, all actions use a Unity installation which needs to be activated. So remember that your build and your tests that are being run are happening on a cloud you know, instance somewhere, which means that Unity needs to be running on that cloud instance or server, right? So as you may well know, when you downloaded Unity, it was either on a personal or a professional license, which is what the cloud instance of Unity needs to know as well, which is precisely why we request for a personal license in this case. So I'm gonna head down here under activation and I'm gonna copy this piece of code, head back into my terminal. You can see here there are no files in my workflows and I'm going to create a new file called touch activation.yml open this up in my favorite core editor and i'm going to paste this here so the next thing i'm going to do is actually head back into the root of the game project here in ci cd demo and you can see here that this folder is now added so i'm going to push this to my project and while we wait for that to happen and once that's done, you can see here in the project on my master branch that was pushed and in my actions, you can see a new action here has been created. It's called acquire activation file. What we're gonna do next is tap on run workflow and click on run workflow so that we run this manually. And now we wait for a bit after the workflow is done. You can see here once I tapped run workflow, it starts to run the workflow itself and it's trying to acquire the activation file, which takes a few moments. And you can see here that the acquire activation file workflow has completed running successfully. So I'm gonna tap on this. And you can see here that an ALF file is available, which I can actually download. So I'm gonna extract the zip now and you can see here that I get an ALF file. I'm gonna to go to open with and I'm gonna hit notepad and I'm gonna copy this entire value. Back in my GitHub repository, I'm gonna to go to settings, secrets, 
and within here I'm going to create a new repository secret and you can see here according to the docs that it asks you to create a secret called unity license and this is where you paste your value you can see here that I successfully created the secret and all the repository secrets are available for my view so once the activation is done it's now time to write the builder yml script so I'm going to head over to builder and to save us some time, I'm going to go all the way to the end and they have a complete example here. So I'm going to copy this. And in my project, I'm going to CD into GitHub workflows and I'm going to create a new file called main.yml. And I'm going to open this in my favorite core editor. I'm going to paste this here, save this. And now we're going to walk through this one by one. So the first thing is we describe the name of the action itself, which is build project. That's fine. Uh, when do I want this to trigger? I don't really care about pull requests right now. I only want this to trigger when I actually do a push. All right, so before we move on, I'm going to quickly explain how jobs work in Unity Actions. If you look at the diagram above, you can see that a job is composed of multiple steps. So step one, step two, step three, you can have more than three steps. And each step sort of executes an action. So think of a job as encapsulated logic, right? That all run sequentially, like all the individual steps run sequentially. And each action is a piece of reusable code that runs on the cloud, right? That's precisely what's happening. So if you look at the second diagram below, which is an example of what we're doing here, uh, building for multiple platforms, that's what the job is called. So we have four steps here, a checkout action, a cache action, a build action, and an upload artifact action. Now, without going into too much detail, there's a lot of information on about this in the docs, but I'll explain them briefly. So a checkout action is akin to just cloning the master branch of your repository so that the GitHub action has your Unity code to work with. A cache action is fairly straightforward. It caches all your library and you know your binaries, your static assets, etc. Your build action again is fairly straightforward. It's been, it's been written by someone else. It you know actually builds your Unity project, and your upload artifact action actually uploads your Unity build onto GitHub Actions so that you can use it later. Now, if we go back to the YML file. I'm going to briefly describe some of this stuff. So you want to make sure that this is running on Ubuntu latest because generally Linux is cheaper. You can check the exact pricing in the documentation. But if, if, you, if you're using a public repository, then you don't really have to worry about actually paying a price. Um, in this matrix here, I don't want to be building for every single platform. So I'm actually going to get rid of these two here and these four as well. So I just want standalone Windows 64 for now. And the steps as we described for this job is just as follows, which is you have your checkout, your cache, your builder action, and your artifact action. So it gets fairly straightforward from now. I'm just going to go back to my project in my terminal. And I'm actually going to show you that I have this file that was created. I'm going to add this, commit this, and I'm just going to push this to my master branch. And you can see here, as soon as I commit it and push that, you can see an action has been triggered. So if I go to actions, you can see here build project, right? And now this is a yellow sort of loading screen. So that basically means it's gonna take some time and it's actually gonna build my project. And now I can pretty much chill. I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee, wait for this to build. It takes around five, six minutes. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna have my build ready to play. So you can see here that my build is done. So the first one actually failed because my activation workflow, I copied the secret wrong into my secret settings. Uh, so I just had to recopy that and read and just make another push. And now this one succeeded. If I click on the successful workflow, you can see here that I have my artifact, which is build standalone Windows 64. I'm going to tap. Once I've downloaded this, I'm going to extract the files here and I'm gonna start my game. And you can see here that I have a simple 2D sprite in my game. So that about wraps it up for this video, guys. I'm gonna leave this repository public here so that anybody can visit and use this as a reference. In some of my future videos, I'll, I'll talk about a few more things such as actually running tests through GitHub Actions and a few other things that we're doing in-house as a game studio. But until then, See you soon.